G'day folks. Well, I'm doing a bit more on the uh, turbocharger project. I've got my uh, high pressure pump, oil pump tested now. So what we need is an oil reservoir. I was going to use some uh, stainless tube at work, but I can't be bothered doing it. So I'm going to use that. That'll be the main suction. I'm going to drill and tap a hole in the side for return and just put a big cover over the top, and, like give the whole thing a good clean up. The top half of a refrigerant compressor. Uh, and for cooling and oil filtration, I've got this nice little uh, scrap bin find. It's a Borg Warner spin-on oil cooler attachment. This spins on in place of a filter with a big O-ring in the back, which I don't have, unfortunately. I'll be able to get one, no problem. And uh, you spin your filter on here, so you've got filtration and cooling. Perfect. I'll just put a little fan on that, and away we go. Now, what am I going to spin this onto? Well, let's have a look in the graveyard and see what I can find. Hmm, the pile of dead everything. Ah, a Volkswagen engine block. It does fit on that one there, on the Daewoo block. And I'd have to use a 9-inch grinder and actually cut part of the block out. But the Volkswagen has a spin-on, oh, sorry, bolt-on housing. And yes, I have tested the threads. It's perfect. So, yeah, let's uh, extract that from the pile of dead everything and uh, get right to it. <laughs> it's good having scrap stuff lying around. Well, while it might look like something that's come out of Loch Ness, that is exactly what I need. It needs a good clean-up, but that's exactly what I need. I'm probably going to have to uh, fabricate a plate to go over this flange here because I can't just drill and tap a uh, thread in that particularly the uh, central oil gallery there can't really do that and that's the discharge side of the filter inlets on there I could probably cut the flange off and tap into that one but that one there's overlized so I'm going to have to take a bit of 12 millimeter thick alley plate and just make my own little cover with BSP threads tapped into it not a hard job at all. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I need. Good. So I've got an oil cooler, oil filter, oil reservoir, pump, lines, all that stuff ready to go. I've just got to work out pressure regulation and a fan, and that's about it. I could spin this thing, spin that turbo up with compressed air, no problem. Or well, the blower, I'll use the big centrifugal blower and just do a dry test, but without a uh, combustor. Then we'll look at combusted design. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Okay, I've just made up part of the uh, oil filter housing. The oil filter is going to be bolted over the uh, face of this plate. Like so. Uh, still have to centralise it and uh, drill and tap the uh, bolt holes, but that should work quite well. I've still got to finish lapping this face into uh, shape, but now that I've drilled and tapped the uh, inlet and outlet fittings properly, it should work quite well. I'm using taper threads as well, so I've got taper thread and Loctite. Uh, Loctite 243. Excellent stuff. Um, oops, without dropping it. I've got to cut this off anyway, I'm just leaving the whole thing together. These fittings just come off like so. And that's it there. Volvo Bus Corporation, part number 326597, fitting nut 12.7, aka half inch or 50 caliber, 0.50 inch. Yeah, it's got stickers all over it. But yeah, this is just surplus from a local coach builder. They buy Volvo chassis in to rebuild as a uh, commercial buses and they don't always use all the fittings that come supplied with them so there's a very large surplus of goodies like this that show up in my scrapyard now and then and of course I buy them for jobs like this. I've got about 50 of those kits. I have to uh, keep making use of them and I'm continuously making use of them. So yeah that's inlet and outlet from filter. Done. I could probably use more volume but I'll address that later if necessary. 
I just want 50 psi at the uh, turbo, that's all I ask for. Alright, let's make a gasket. In case you're wondering how I printed that on there, well, I didn't use a printer. I just used a bit of uh, gasket cement, painted on the flange that I want the gasket for, and you just carefully hold the gasket flat, push it on there, holding it steady, don't let it slide around, and then um, quickly pull it off, and that's what you're left with. A nice little print of your uh, gasket, and you just cut out the uh, lighter areas. Really easy. You probably use other substances, but gasket cement's the best thing for it. That's what I'm going to be using to seal it up by the look of it, so that'll work. There we go. Something like this you can get away with just leaving the excess on there and cut it off afterwards. That's torqued down. I'll let it cure and uh, should be good to go. I mean, if it wasn't a risk of uh, debris blogging the uh, high pressure output, I'd just I wouldn't even bother cutting the inner sections out, I'd just punch something through it, but you don't want to punch it through and have a piece of uh, gasket break off and come through the high pressure side, block up the uh, turbocharger oil input. N not a good thing. So yeah, everything in there is clean and ready to go. I'm just going to run the knife around there and uh, split the rest of the uh, gasket material off. And that's ready to go. I might cut it off about here and mount that on the housing. Should be pretty good. I'll just get a little oil filter, a little Toyota Corolla oil filter. Okay, another little mod that I'm doing is taking advantage of the blanked off or unused uh, oil pressure port on the uh, filter housing, which I've drilled out and tapped 1 8 BSP, pretty standard pipe, standard tap. And uh, I'm going to screw a service port on there from a ref refrigerant compressor and use a uh, capillary line and pressure gauge just to tell what pressure is coming out of the uh, filter. I'm going to have a couple of pressure gauges on this uh, setup, the more the merrier. If I wanted to, I could also drill the centre of that out and do the same thing. So I've got pressure, go pressure reading from the input side of the filter, pressure reading from the output side of the filter, if I wanted to. Right now I'm only concerned about output pressure going straight to the turbocharger bearing. So I'm going to have that one. I'm also going to try and have a capillary line on the uh, turbocharger um, itself, on the uh, cassette itself. So yeah, should be pretty easy. Got more than enough equipment to measure pressures and temperatures and things like that. So measuring EGR, oil pressure, uh, even combusted chamber pressure shouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah, that's the filter that I intend on using. I do have some older, bigger ones with more volume, but volume's not so much an issue here. I'm going to get more than enough volume through these fittings. So I'm using a uh, surplus Corolla air, um, oil filter that I have floating around. ROF21, aka Ryko Z386. Toyota Corolla AE82 uses that one. Uh, probably quite a number of other Toyotas. It's a little bit small for the RAV4. I think the RAV4 uses a slightly bigger version, not by much. Though it wouldn't surprise me if this just drops in as a replacement, but yeah, that'll spin straight onto the adapter. I have tried it and it's got a better seal surface as well. Because the outer edge of this um, Volkswagen Audi seal is a little bit too big, but with the adapter on there it actually works quite well because the adapter has a much bigger surface area so the seal makes full contact. And that's essentially how it'll go. We'll have that filter, block and then housing. Quite easy and very, very, very uh, effective. Okay, there we go, that's the oil tank. That's the uh, outlet to the pump. As you can see, that's a magnetron magnet. Pick up any uh, ferrous particles and stuff. Won't do anything for the non-ferrous and non-metallic stuff, but it's better than nothing. And stay over the uh, suction side of the pump. That's going to go off there to the fitting that I've soldered in. And, well, yeah, it's just a tank. All I've done is uh, 
weld a couple of tabs to it with this arc welder and away we go. So that's going on to there. That is going to be modified and fitted to the housing which is going on here after a bit of reinforcing work. Might even move it further back. Yeah, not a bad idea. Really need a second VFD because I'm going to be using a uh, three-phase centrifugal blower to try and start the turbine. And uh, I could capacitor start, capacitor run it. And uh, more than likely that's what's going to happen, but it'd be nice to get the other VFD working if I can work up, work out how to hook up the uh, speed control potentiometer. I'll have a look at that one soon. So I really need a second VFD trying to run two three-phase motors at once. It's a bit hard around here. <coughs> at least as far as actual three-phase is concerned. Anyway, that'll do for tonight. Thanks for watching.